Welcome back, everybody. I think Chili is going way too far now, and he's trying to get people seriously hurt or much worse. He has this new product he's pushing, and to say it's going to put people in danger would be an understatement. Let's start from the beginning. This morning, I got a notification from my subreddit page. It's a Reddit page I started over a year ago. We're in the top 13% by size. And on that page, we talk about fraud editors. I strongly encourage you to join that subreddit page. And I got an alert that the Lee's Laws was starting to sell a pistol keychain. And the poster said, this is the most insane idea I have ever seen. So of course, I went to Delete Laws community post, and there it was. It says, these are almost ready. The larger keychain, which has a removable magazine and which cocks and can be disassembled like a real gun, comes in a tin with a window on one side and a logo on the other. The smaller keychain is also cool. So at first I told myself, there's no way, he's not that stupid. He's not going to sell a keychain that looks like a gun and that can be perceived like a gun. And I looked at the other pictures and the third picture shows a small box. So obviously it's a small gun. And the next picture shows the smaller guns on the keychains. Now these ones are so small, I don't think they'll cause that much of an issue. Although I have seen extremely small guns being fired on YouTube, but I don't think most cops will think that this is a firearm. However, when I went back to the big picture, I realized, no, this is a different model. This does not look like a keychain whatsoever. And he's even flexing the fact that it looks like a real gun. And then I realized, I think Chili is trying to get people killed. I think Chili is trying to get people killed by the cops because they think the suspect has a real gun. Because think about it for a second. If more people get injured or killed by police, who does that help? That helps Chili. That helps his movement. That's what he's been trying to prove all these years. This guy is fucking nuts. And apparently I'm not the only one who thinks that. Even his people think this is much. This guy is saying this is a setup. Someone else is saying I agree. Keep in mind this is on his community post. Then this other guy is saying I wonder how many men and women will get murdered over these. Ma officer safety. He had a pistol. Even though he's making a joke and is clearly a lens licker. He's clearly saying that people will get killed over this. And if it looks like a gun and people are just casually having that in their car and you know how unhinged suspects are sometimes, they're always reaching around even though they're told not to, there's going to be casualties from this. And I think Chili is going to be thrilled that this item is doing its purpose, which is getting more people injured or possibly worse by police to further his movement. Now, another thing is that Chile may have messed up when it comes to the firearm policy. Usually, I'm well versed in most of YouTube's policies, but firearms doesn't really concern my channel. I don't show any firearms, so I haven't researched it that much. I don't know if he violates any of these policies, but one thing's for sure, if people were to report his community posts or his channel, that could put him in trouble. But like I said, not 100% sure. I'm not an expert in these policies. Now that I've exposed this absolutely diabolical plan, I want to show you guys what he had to say two days ago. That was on the 25th. That's his latest update live from the dungeon. Hello, Team VLV. This is Chili DiCastro. Today is April 25th, 2024. I am an and incarcerated at Clark County Detention Center. I am in the dungeon. The video of my wrongful arrest, the video of my wrongful persecution has been seen by millions of people. I am innocent and I am in jail. So thank you for taking the time to listen to this. I appreciate it. I have been in here now for almost six weeks. It's been a very difficult journey for me. I'm a people person. I love people. I love, I'm an empath. I care about people. And so what I've done with my time in here was I mentioned about two years ago that I was going to create a board game called Constitutional Law Scholar. Well, guess what? I have created a board game called Constitutional Law Scholar. What? What the f I have a 
little bit of the blanks to fill in, but I'm going to have the entire game on paper so I can translate it into cards, much like the Trivia Pursuit game of the 1980s and the 90s, that box of cards you got. But this is U.S. Constitutional Law Scholars board game, and it's played differently than just on a board. It's completely different than that. But I'm not going to go into too many details, but it is super exciting. If you ever wanted to learn the United States history or constitutional history, this thing that I've created is so interactive. It is so cool. If you're just a person who wants to learn history or play a history game, or if you're homeschooling your kids and you want to teach them history, if you are a school and you have a classroom full of students who want to learn history, if you're a bunch of 40-year-old dudes sitting around who want to learn history, I've created the most interactive, badass game you have ever seen and this next week, I'll have a lot more knowledge because someone is sending me in the books that I requested. And so let me take that time just to take a segue here and say thank you. I've gotten your letters. I've gotten so many letters from John, from Joe, from Eric, from, oh, man, I don't want to miss anybody's names, but I always do what people's names. From, from, and then you guys sent me books as well, but I don't know who the book comes from because it has to come from a publisher here in Vegas or it has to come from Amazon directly. You can't just send me a book from your house. So I don't know who sent me this book called Probable Cause, but I want to say thank you for that book. And I want to say thank you for you guys sending me tons of letters. I mean, I really appreciate it. Um, you guys can put the address up there in the edit, but thank you so much for sending me letters. It brings my spirit up so much. However, I'm just so excited about this new game that has really sprang to life as it and locked up in here because I have to spend my time doing something. I'm always a productive person. And so I spent my time creating this board game for you. And when I get out of here, I will have it completely done within 30 days. I'm going to make a thousand copies and I'll have them out within 30 days from the time I'm released from this dungeon. And then other thing that I kind of wanted to briefly talk about here is Stockholm Syndrome. I want you guys to research, Google, look up Stockholm Syndrome because I am living it. I'm absolutely living it. I don't want to go into too much detail because I want you guys to research Stockholm Syndrome yourself, but because I'm such an empathic person, because I feel the plight and the pain of others, I put myself in other people's shoes to see how they see it, I'm definitely going through Stockholm Syndrome. I absolutely can't stand it. I hate it. But that's what's happening to me right now. I've also decided to change my diet while I'm in here because the food is absolute slop. It is horrifically bad. It is like the lowest grade of food ever. And so now I'm doing is eating the vegetables on the tray. That's all I'm doing. A couple of you guys sent me eye care gift packages. There's a website called eye care gifts. Thank you so much. I'm trading the food that you sent me through eye care gifts to, to other people for bottled water. I can only order three bottles of water at a time, so that's what I'm doing with that. And, you know, I'm going through some stuff through the legal process here. There's some legal things going on. I will let Michael Eline uh, tell you what's going on tonight on the channel when he goes live. I, I don't want to get into it too much because I don't want to give it too much credence, too much attention. You know, there's just, there's always people in the world who are going to be, you know, you guys can see it. There's people who celebrate me being in jail, even though I've committed no crime, I've hurt nobody. No Wait a minute, celebrate him being in jail? I find that very hard to believe. Let me know, are you celebrating Chili being in jail? I want to hear your thoughts and comments in the comment section because I find it really hard that someone would celebrate a constitutional law scholar being exposed for knowing absolutely nothing about the law and getting owned in court multiple times. No property is damaged. Nobody is hurt. Nobody's bleeding in the street. There's no babe weeping. There's no one crying. They've been stolen money from. Nothing. I'm an innocent person in jail, but there's still people who celebrate that I'm in jail, which is just, that's, it's just, <laughs> you know, but that's not going to be me. I'm not, I'm not that kind of person. I, 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 I'm not going to stop being a loving, caring, giving person. I'm going to continue to be who I am. And the best gift that I could have done for the world is created this game, U.S. Constitutional Law Scholar. When I go away and I'm on a graveyard somewhere and there's a headstone, they'll say, this man created U.S. Constitutional Law Scholar, the game. Because I think this is going to be one of my greatest contributions to society that I've ever done. 
because it is the most interactive, fun way to learn history that you'll ever see in your entire life. You will never play a game that's more fun and more interactive than you can play with seven-year-old kids or seven-year-old men. It doesn't matter. I have been sitting here for a month and a half, and most of the time I'm a walk down to a bed with a desk at it, and I just have my pen, my paper, and my brain. And I'm fortunate that I have a near-photographic memory because I memorized so many cases and so much of history and amendments and uh, states and all these things, and I've been able to put it together in the most incredible way you've ever seen. It didn't take long, to be honest with you. I've been, had the concept in my head for a long time, but I hadn't just sat down and said, okay, what are the nuts and bolts of this and how does this work? How do you learn history by playing a game and it's fun? How do I do that? And how do I make it so it's not too hard for people? Because that was a big one. How do I make a game where if I want you to know the 1883 case of Pace versus Alabama, if I want you to know that case, how do I present it to you in a way that you can learn Pace versus Alabama and at the same time, it's interactive and it's fun. And I figured that out. I figured that out. And so I have, I'm giving you my word, within 30 days of me being below, I gotta live through this first. There's lots of people who leave this dungeon feet first. So I have to live through this first. It's, it's very real and it's very scary. But optimistically, if I can have some optimism here for a moment, someone put a ray of sunshine on my face, please, because I have not seen the sun since March 17th, 2024. Not one beam of, of sunlight has hit my face since that day. So that really makes it, I've only been here a month and a week. Regardless, I've created something that I think is gonna stand the test of time because Trivial Pursuit was created, I think, in the late 80s. And that game is obviously dated. Nothing against it. I love playing that game, but they have current affairs and they have science. Some of the science now has been debunked and some of those current affairs are from, they're just no longer relevant to, to our society. But U.S. Constitutional Law Scholar, this game I created, it'll be relevant for the rest of my life and the rest of yours because history is not going to be changing. Remember, there was a bastardized version of history created by a guy named William Archibald Dunnan who partnered with the Sisters of the Confederacy to write a whitewashed version of history. And I'm sorry that that's true, but it is. This is the unedited version of history where you truly learn. I'm talking the learning factor in this is a hundred times. It is 10X, 10X, 10X. And to me, I feel like I've been able to take advantage of this horrific process I'm being put through and I've been able to take my time and my brain and my ability and my knowledge and create a product that you guys will be able to have and play with. And, I, and I'm super stoked about it, you know? Look, um, obviously there's nonsense going on in the world. There's, there's things I have to deal with legally that I shouldn't have to deal with, but I have to deal with them. And so I think we're creating another, another uh, GoFundMe because I have to deal with this and it's real. And so I don't want to give it too much credence and I don't want to give it too much credit and I don't want to sit and talk about it. And, and Michael Eli, I don't want you to sit and harp on this either. I want you to talk mostly about my upcoming case on May 1st, which is another obstruction charge in Las Vegas. Focus just on that, Mr. Eli. And let me say thank you to Michael Eli. He came and saw me again yesterday. And that guy is, he's a warrior for freedom, for liberty. If you guys have a case where someone got hit by a car or a car accident or any kind of any kind of case like that, hit up Michael because he is doing, well, for me as a person, he's been a saint. He has been helping me. So, And to my team, there are people on my team, I'm not going to say their names, my, my friend in Cali, my friend in Cali, my, my friend in Pennsylvania, my, my friend... Um, uh, my friend in, in San Diego, there, there are people who have just helped me so much. So I don't think that Chili really has friends. I don't think he knows what the word friends mean. I think he has acquaintances that are using him to get clout out of him. I'm thinking of Brian, definitely. And then there's a couple other people I can think of. Because when you think about it, this guy is just so miserable and despicable. And all he does is grift and scam. He can only align himself with other grifters and scammers. That's for damn sure. A friend in Texas, 
uh, my friend in New Jersey, my, my friend overseas. I have so many people who have helped me, and I just want to say thank you because I'm taking the most advantage that I can of this time to be creative and to be productive. And for the letters you guys have sent me every day, I get letters, I get three to six letters every single day. And don't stop writing. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. You can send me to Jose De Castro, 1669561, TCDC, and then that's going to be PO Box 43059, Las Vegas, Nevada, 890116. So thank you for sending me letters. They actually bring my spirit up and my soul up. I didn't think that just getting a letter with a few hand scratch words on there, some people just send me a letter and they say, hey, Chili, we love you, man, and we're thinking about you, and this is wrong, what's happened to you, and we don't stop. And that's the whole letter. Dude, thank you for sending that. Joe, I got your letter. John, I got your letter. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to remember everybody's name, especially when I'm just rattling for the daily update for April 25th. But I do want to say thank you for sending me letters. I really super, super appreciate it. My friend Alan, my friend David, my friend V, there's people, and you guys have put money on my books, and you put money on my phone, so I can always go to commissary and order something, and... Not everybody has that opportunity. There's people in here who don't have anything at all. They have nobody putting any money on their books. And you guys are actively doing that for me consistently. And I just want to, from the bottom of my heart, say thank you to you guys who have done this. And, of course, I'm going to make some constitutional law scholar games available for people who are super low income. Because the game itself, I mean, it'll, it'll cost money to get it, but I will make some versions available. The exact same version as the one that's regular, and I'll make it available for low-income people so that you guys can use the game as well and play the game. And that's all I can do is, is just keep doing what I do. And listen, I, I, I'm not walking around in here like you know skateboarding through here and be like, yeah, this is great. When I talk to you guys on the phone and I give a daily update, I've got to pull my spirit up. I got to pull my attitude up. I got to pull my head up and say, you know what? I'm addressing the people. And these are the people who love me and support me and who are on Team DLC. And so I pull up my spirit and I say, you show them that you can't be broken. You know, you guys saw me in court. That was after I was in the hole for five days. I told the, I told one of the guards last night, that, that, you know, this is part of the Stockholm Syndrome I was telling you about. We had a conversation last night and I said, I'm going to end this 23-hour day lockdown. Do you know that I don't remember my hearing? When I was brought before Judge Zimmerman for the second time for my appeal bond, I don't remember any of it, not a single word of it, because I had been put in 23 hour a day lockdown. When they pulled me out of that lockdown after being in there for five days, I think I was crying before I even got halfway down the hallway, and I didn't even know why I was crying. I just knew I was scared, and I was tired of being locked in this tiny little room. And I don't remember any of it. My brain cells over that five days had shrunk. They don't give you a pencil. They don't give you a book. Nothing. You just sit in this tiny, tiny cell. And then once in a while, they threw a cellmate in there. And sometimes that cellmate makes it worse for you. It makes it a lot worse. So I was telling this guard last night, you guys have given me a new part of my mission, which is the end of the 23-hour-a-day lockdown. Now, this is definitely hell where I'm at. But there's nothing like 23-hour-a-day lockdown. Nobody should be treated that way. Nobody should be treated that way. And I tell you what, I'm going to end it. And I'm going to do it with you, and we're going to do it together. There's no way a person who's in the dungeon for a misdemeanor charge, there's no reason. You have one minute left. There's no reason in the world they should be locked into a room for 23 hours a day, and we got to change it. So I'll try to end on a positive note. Thank you for your support. I appreciate you. If you sent me an eye care gift or if you sent me a book, I don't know who you are. No name comes on it. So let me just say now, thank you. For your letters, thank you. For your support on my GoFundMe, there'll be another one tonight for the new charge I'm facing for obstructing justice May 1st. Thank you for your support. I really appreciate it. I love you. We don't stop. I'll see you when I get out of here. Thank you again. I'll see you on the next one. So that's all I have for you guys for today. If you would have told me a year ago that Chili is going to make a board game and people would actually buy it, I would have thought you were completely drunk. But yet, here we are, and this guy is still grifting.
And I think he is going way too far with the gun replicas. He's trying to get a lot of people killed, especially minorities, so he can further his movement. I think that's pretty clear. There's no doubt about it. But let me know what you think about this in the comment section. Don't forget to subscribe and check out the subreddit. It's an amazing place for conversation. And I promote free speech over there. I constantly get criticized, bashed, roasted. But that's okay because unlike the frauditors and the roughnecks, I actually enjoy a little bit of criticism and I enjoy talking to the other side of the table. I am a very, very strong advocate for free speech and we really can't say that about the frauditors. That's for damn sure. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys on the next one. I live here!